Good morning, everyone. Very happy to be here. So I am going to talk about Ray. But before, um, just a little bit of context. Uh, over the past 15 years, I was lucky to be involved in many open source projects. And over the past year, actually, I collaborated closely with Meta and the PyTorch community on a few projects. Chatbot Arena, which is now the most popular in the wild LLM evaluation platform. VLLM, which is today the most popular open source inference engine. And finally, Ray. Today, like I said, I'm going to talk about Ray, um, who, which is the oldest project, but recently went through some significant transformations. And I'm going to talk about that. Again, more historical context. When we started to work on, Dre, on, on Spark, actually back in 2009, we focused on scaling big data and classic machine learning applications. And we are doing that on clusters which are pretty much homogeneous. Most of the nodes are pretty much the same, some CPUs and some storage. Fast forward in 2016, when we started to work on Dre, world changed a little bit the rays of deep learning and reinforcement learning. And the clusters themselves become more complicated because now they have to include GPU, which are indispensable for supporting these workloads. So the goal of Ray is to tame this complexity to simplify scaling AI workloads on heterogeneous clusters. To put things into perspective, this is a pretty classic machine learning pipelines, and it's a recommendation system. So you get some data, you pre-process the data, you do some featureization, maybe now today embeddings, compute the embeddings. Then you use the data to train a model or pre-train a model, fine-tune it. And then once you have the model on a checkpoint, you are going to do patch prediction or inference to evaluate it. And finally, you deploy it in production. So what is the problem? Well, the problem, like I mentioned, you need to scale these pipelines. So you need to scale each of these stages. And while you have good systems to scale each of these stages, to scale the entire pipeline, you need to stitch together these systems. And this is where the problem occurs. First, it is hard to develop because this system has its own API. Second, it's hard to deploy and manage because each of the systems has different configuration parameters, uh, different failure semantics, consistency semantics, and so forth. And finally, it's also slow because if you move the data between the stages, typically you have to do, you have to store and read from a blob store. So Ray addresses all these problems. How? Instead of stitching together this, all these systems, you can use only, only one system, Ray, which is general enough to support all of these workloads. And in particular, for AI workloads, it makes it easier to support these workloads by providing powerful distributed libraries like Ray Data, Ray Train, Ray Tune, Ray Serve, and RLE for reinforcement learning. Ray has a pretty minimalist API. This is a minimum, uh, the API of Ray Core. You know, it's like around six core functions, and I'm not going to describe each of them, but I'm going to show how you use them with using some simple examples. But before, why Ray is general? And to understand that, let's talk a little bit about the computation model that Ray implements and we call FAST. So first, Ray takes the key um, computer abstraction, which are provided by almost every programming languages, function and classes, and execute them remotely and transparently. Second, it take, it's not only execute this, um, you know, um, function as task and classes as actors remotely, but it's doing that asynchronously. So when you, when you submit a task to the Ray runtime, you get immediately back a pointer to the result, which we call distributed future or future for short. And this allows you to call a, the next task and the next task and the next task. And all these tasks are going to be executed in parallel. So this is how you enable parallelism. Finally, Array has a shared in memory distributed object stores, which allows you to efficiently pass the data by reference. So here is a simple example. You have a function, which is just doing something for one second. And you call this function twice uh, with different arguments A and B. The entire program will take two seconds. Of course, these two functions they are not dependent, so you could execute them in parallel. So let's see how we, we can do that with Ray. 
So to do so with Ray, basically we are going towards a, dec a decorator, Ray dot remote, to the function, and basically this will tell Ray that it can execute this function remotely, right? And then we are going to add dot remote suffixes to the invocation of f. So when we are going to execute the first uh, function call, f here, what will happen is that we are going to submit a task to Ray, to the Ray runtime, and we are going to get immediately back the future, future of this task, which is a pointer to the result. And now immediately we can call the second invocation of f, and the same thing will happen. We are going to get a future of this, and finally, we are going to call ray.get to get the final results produced by these two functions. This is a blocking call, right? Eventually, these tasks are going to be scheduled and are going to run in parallel. They are going to produce the results, and the result will be sent back to the driver. So now the entire program will take one second. In addition, like I mentioned, Ray allows you also to, to, to instantiate classes remotely as actors. The same way you decorate the class, and then when you create the, uh, the class or you invoke its methods, you add the dot remote suffix. Furthermore, Ray allows you to say what kind of resources an actor of a task you want to use. So in this case, we want to use two CPUs and one GPU. And this is how Ray provides support for heterogeneous clusters. Finally, the last concept, share in memory object store. Here again, you see, if, uh, uh, I'm, I'm showing a very simple example where G, where G um, uses an argument which is created by function f. First we call f and then it's going to spawn a task. We get the reference to the result of f. We are going to pass it to g, and g is spawn, and of course, it's going to get the reference back to the driver. Now, g has to wait for f to run. f produces the result. The result will be copied to node 3, where g runs, and it's going to be consumed by g. The main important point to notice here is that x is transferred only once between node 2 and node 3. If you wouldn't have object store, then f should, should send the result back to the driver, and the driver to send the results to g, to node 3. So you have two transfers. Of course, much less efficient. So today, Ray is emerging as a computer framework for scaling all kinds of AI workloads, workloads for building modern AI infrastructure and platforms, and it's used by many companies like Uber, Amazon, Netflix, um, Shopify, Spotify, and many more. It has been also used by OpenAI to scale their largest model, including GPT-4, by Cohere to, uh, to train their LLMs and, so, and, and many more. So now switching gears, what happens from 2016 until now? Well, all of you know, it's generative AI, right? Generative AI emerge, so the, uh, the uh, application becomes even more complex. And also the infrastructure becomes even more complex, right? Right now, you no longer have only NVIDIA GPUs, you have TPUs, you have AMD G uh, GPUs, and almost every superscalar, meta including, included, they are, they are uh, having their own accelerators. So we are really witnessing today a transition from a CPU-centric world to an accelerator-centric world. And while Ray is actually providing support for heterogeneous computing, it's not enough for this new world. And why is not enough? Because the overhead. Ray is pretty good when you have tasks which are like 10, sec 10 milliseconds or more. But if the task takes shorter, you, you, you know, the overhead shows up. So what is the overhead? Well, when you invoke a task, you do a, a bunch of RPC calls, you pay the cost of dynamic memory allocation. In fact, it's difficult to efficiently support this peer-to-peer -peer protocol like RDMA and Nickel because it requires upfront resource allocation of all peers to avoid deadlocks. So to illustrate this inefficiency, let's see what happens in Ray today when you try to execute the following simple program. Here you have a trivial class which is just incrementing a number. 
and you instantiate this class twice, so you create two actors, and you call these actors serially, right? So um, here you are going to pass an argument of one to the first, uh, to the first actor. When you do that, first the driver has to write the argument in the shared memory object store because this is how Ray is passing the arguments. And then it's going to pass the reference of this argument to the worker, which is going, as you know by now, is going to return the future to its results. This future is going to be passed to the second actor, which is going to return the final, the pointer to the final results. And then finally, in the driver, we are going to call ray.get to get the final results and print it. Right? Now, ray goes to work and start to execute the methods for each uh, actor. A reads one, it's incremented it, it writes the output, B is, do, is doing the same things, and the final result three is then passed to the driver. So the point to notice here is that the driver makes six RPC calls, two on the data plane and four on the control plane, and it also needs to dynamically allocate the memory in the object store for every argument and result. Quite a lot. To address this kind of inefficiency, we are introducing these accelerated dynamic acyclic graphs, or ADACs. And the goal is to run much smaller tasks efficiently with very low overhead. For instance, if it's 10 milliseconds, you want the overhead to be less than 1%. We also want to be able to do efficient GPU to GPU data transfers with less than 10 microseconds system overhead per operation. So what are ADACs? You can think about like static graphs with Ray core like API. When we allocate resources up front, and then we are going to reuse across multiple executions. That's basically the idea. It's experimental, so please, if you are interested, try it and help us to improve it. So for the previous examples, this is how we are going to, to do things with ADACs. We are going to declare here a, an ADAG, and this is a simple one, basically A, get the input of the ADAG and its output is then consumed by B. Then we compile this ADAG. By compiling, it means you allocate all the resources. We create these actors. The actors are going to work, run in a, into a loop to process the ADAG tasks. And we also, we pre-allocate the buffers for the arguments and for the results of, this, of the task in the ADAG, right? And then we execute it, and something similar happens when you execute it. You know, the driver writes uh, the argument in the share of the ob uh, uh, object store. A reads it, increments it. B is doing the same. The final result is three, and it's going to be sent back to the driver. The point now here is that instead of six RPC calls, we have only two RPC calls, basically writing the argument to the object store and reading the result, which is optimal. And then there are no dynamic memory allocations. We just use the pre-allocated buffers. Finally, this is about how Ray helps us uh, to optimize the GPU to GPU transfers. Again, what happens today? Remember, all the data in Ray is, is transferred through the object store. So if you want to transfer one tensor from GPU zero to GPU one, what will happen is that you first need, to, in, in, uh, you know, under, uh, under the hood, the tensor will be transferred to the shared memory object store, then over the network to the receiver, then transferred to the GPU one memory. Okay? So you have a bunch of copies which involve slower memory and a transfer over the slow network. With ADAG, you get rid of all of this, you are going to, in this case, to um, construct a trivial DAG between GPU, one, GPU 0 and GPU 1. You are going also to provide a hint to say, in this case, that you want the transfer to be cap and over nickel. And as a result, you are going to tensor, the tensor is going to be transferred directly between GPU 0 and GPU 1 over nickel, which, again, in this case, is optimal. As you know, Ray has a very tight integration with the PyTorch ecosystem. They are both Python native. Most training and serving in Ray leverages PyTorch. And with ADAG, we'll expand the workloads we support. We already support pipeline parallelism in BLLM, and we are experimenting with 4D model parallelism for training. 
See here are some examples of integrations, batch inference, and the main thing to notice here about the batch inference that the pre-processing and post-processing in this case happen on the CPUs on, you, on the less powerful GPUs if you want, and the inference happens on the powerful GPUs. And by leveraging the parallels, you can reduce the cost by 10x compared with running everything on the powerful GPUs. And many other workloads like fine tuning, multimodal search, embedding computation, you name it. For those of you who prefer a hosted version of Ray, AnyScale, the company behind Ray, provides a managed Ray platforms with some bunch of tools to improve your productivity. Um, it's going to improve the performance of your Ray workloads. Uh, it lowers your TCO and provides net native observability and obviously support from Ray experts. So in summary, AI workloads are becoming more and more complex. At the same time, the infrastructure is becoming more and more complex. It used to be only distributed. That was complex enough. But now it's very heterogeneous and distributed. So it's huge complexity. The main goal and aim of Ray is to tame this complexity by significantly simplifying scaling AI workloads on these complex infrastructures. Finally, within less than two weeks, we have the Ray Summit here in San Francisco. We have a great line of speakers. So if you are interested in Ray or just curious, please join us at the Ray Summit. Thank you.